Hello, wonderful souls. Welcome to Guided Space Podcast. My name is Jessica, and I'm a twin flame and spiritual coach. My mission is to create a space to guide you from within. Whether you're seeking guidance on navigating the intricate dance of relationships, uncovering your life's purpose, or simply desiring a deeper understanding of the world around you, this podcast is your compass. Join me in this sacred space as we embark on a journey that will challenge your perspectives while expanding your consciousness, growth, self-discovery, and transformation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my first official episode. I am your host, Jessica Mendez, also known as Guided Space. If you're here, you've probably seen me on TikTok or Instagram where I make videos about twin flames and spirituality. Today's episode is simply just going to be about what is a twin flame, just to get you all started. Many of you ask me, what is a twin flame? How do I know I'm on a twin flame journey? And I know that sometimes it can be quite hard to decipher, is this a twin flame or is it a karmic or is it a soulmate? Is it just a random regular connection? Is this just sexual? Is this, you know, because the twin flame journey, as most of us know, it is a very, very sexual connection. It's so intense from the beginning. Maybe not from the very, very beginning for some people, because I know that's not the case for everybody's journey, especially if you got activated later. For example, some people meet their twin when they're teenagers or in their early 20s, and they don't get activated until they reunite, say, 10 to 20 years later. So what is a twin flame? How do we know this is the connection? I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible on this episode. However, obviously, I'm going to be going into many different concepts that we experience on the twin flame journey throughout various episodes on this podcast. So stay tuned. All right, so let's dive deep, shall we? So what is a twin flame? It is a very, very deep soul connection. It is very magnetic. When we get to the spiritual element of it, it is your other half. It is two halves of one soul split in half into two bodies, okay? So there's the masculine energy and there's the feminine energy, which is why there's a divine feminine and why there's a divine masculine. You can only have one twin flame. So for anyone who tells you that you can have more, no. Yes, you can have many soul connections. You can have many soulmates. You can have many karmic partners. But you can only have one twin flame because that person is your other half. It is your divine counterpart. It is your mirror, okay? They are you and you are them. And I know on the 3D, like in the physical world, it is so hard to grasp that. It's so hard to understand that. It doesn't make sense, right? I'm a very logical, rational person. Yes, I believe in spirituality and I, be, you know, I'm, I believe in a lot of things that we cannot see physically because I'm the type of person that believes you don't have to see it to believe it. However, <laughs> It can take a lot for me to believe something that I cannot see. So I've been spiritual basically my entire life, but some things were harder for me to grasp. I couldn't open my mind to all spiritual concepts. But on this journey, a twin flame is essentially, it is you. It is you in another body. But in the spiritual world, if you have a twin flame, you, your higher self and your twin's higher self is already merged, is already in union. You guys are already in union in the spiritual world, in the spiritual dimension, okay? But physically, physically you may not be in union, but in the spiritual world, you're already in union, which is why you feel such a deep longing for this person, which is why when you meet and you feel that activation and you're like, I don't understand why this connection is so strong. <gasps> why do I, you know, you, you feel like your heart sank when you saw them, right? I'm sure you, you, you had to have had some kind of instant connection when you saw them. It is very, very intense and abrupt and it shakes you to your core. It is a, a very, very profound connection. Yes, you can feel, oh, you can gasp when you see a good looking person, but it is not the same feeling you get when you see your twin flame. 
And sometimes you feel that connection either through their voice, not even by how you look at them, but their voice. So it's usually what I've noticed is people feel this instant twin flame connection either by hearing their voice or seeing their eyes and it makes your heart drop (laughs) so you start to you feel this connection and it is instant recognition and you feel this longing for them which is why we go into separation because we have to go into separation many twin flames have actually most twin flames have to go into separation because it has to teach you not to depend on them. But let me get back. So a twin flame, I get a little all over the place because I get so excited. I'm sorry. I'm going to try not to do that, but please bear with me. Okay. So a twin flame, when you meet them, it is so magnetic. It is so intense, right? It's very fiery. It's passionate. In 75, at least, I want to say at least 75% of my clients, the divine feminines are like, I don't even know what drew me to them. I don't know, you know, they're not even my type. He's not, they're not my type. Why am I drawn to this person? Because it is a soul recognition. The soul doesn't see the physical, okay? The soul, you recognize somebody by their soul, not by their physical attributes, their, their characteristics. Yes, you can be drawn to them because of physical characteristics. Um, But a lot of my clients have this where they're like, they're not my type. I don't know what it is. And that's a big part of it. Obviously, that's not going to apply to everybody. That doesn't apply to me because my twin is my type (laughs) physically. And so that's, that's a big thing, right? It is, it's just a very deep soul recognition and you can't explain it. All you know is the feeling that you get. And a lot of people say that it feels like home. However, I know that you can also get this feeling when you have a soulmate, when you meet a soulmate. A lot of people will feel very comfortable with a soulmate. I know I did, right? With my husband, he is a soulmate connection. I felt very, very comfortable with him from day one because you have many past lives with your soulmate as well, not just with your twin flame. This is why the people that we we meet, we're very comfortable with them. And I'll probably get into this in, in another episode, but like why you feel connections with somebody, it is because you've had past lives with them. All right. So with a twin flame, so it is a very deep soul connection. It's magnetic. It is basically you are yin and yang. Okay. It's like masculine, feminine, hot and cold. There are polar opposites that basically complete each other. And, and this is why you have to have a divine feminine and divine masculine energy. You cannot have two divine feminines. You can have two females. So the, and the, the, the divine masculine and divine feminine is not based on sex because you can have two females where one is feminine, uh, divine feminine and one is divine masculine. Okay. So this is not a heterosexual based counterpart. However, most of my clients are heterosexual. Most of my clients, I would say only about two to 5% are homosexual. It is very, very rare, but it can happen. And I even have divine feminines who are a male figure and divine masculines who are female figure. I've had that recently. And so what happens? So when you meet your twin flame, like I said, it's very intense and whatnot, and you long for them. You go crazy because this connection is so, so intense. You don't know what to do with yourself. It's, it's probably making you glowing. You're giddy. You're so happy. You're like, what is this feeling? It is so joyous. It is such a beautiful feeling, right? And, and some people might even notice, wow, you're glowing. What's gotten into you? <laughs> you're, you become different because you are waking up and you don't know it at the time. It takes time to understand what you're going through. Then what happens? Usually when you are talking to this person, there's on average, you are talking to them, dating or whatever the case may be for six to eight weeks on average. It can go up to three months. It can go up to a year. It can go up longer. Everyone's journey varies, but on average, this is what happens. There is this, it's like a timeline, but This is not the case for everybody. I've had very rare cases where they're dating for a long time. 
but they they run into many many obstacles because they're not healed or they're not they're not i shouldn't say healed they're not balanced your divine feminine and masculine energies are not balanced that is a, that is essentially what has to happen you have to balance your inner divine masculine and feminine energies so just because you you know let's say you listening you are the divine feminine doesn't mean you only have feminine energy within you. You have to balance both within you, okay? So this is what happens to a lot of the divine feminines and divine masculines. They go through the, you know, this, wow, this magnetic connection, and then you um, you kind of go back and forth for a little while, and what happens? The divine masculine gets scared. The divine masculine is always the one who runs the most or who runs first. They'll ghost you. They'll run for the hills. They'll they'll avoid you, or they take longer to reply back when before they were replying, you know, more consistently. And it this triggers the divine feminine to go into what the heck is happening mode, right? What is this? And they start freaking out. They start getting anxious. And they're like, what happened? Everything was going good. We had all this passionate chemistry. We were fiery. I know this person is into me. So what the heck is happening? This drives the divine feminine crazy. And it, this is why I compare this twin flame dynamic to an anxious attachment, the divine feminine, to avoidant attachment, divine masculine. See, I like to balance spirituality with psychology because there is a lot of psychology into this dynamic but this is a very spiritual connection this is the most divine divine relationship that you can have with somebody okay so what happens the divine feminine goes crazy because the divine masculine is also going crazy but he's scared he's so or i'm gonna say they they're scared i say masculine excuse me but because you know masculine can be female but the divine masculine gets so scared so they run for the hills and i've met with various divine masculines and why do they run because they're so scared of the connection because they feel that they're not worthy of this type of love because they've never had this type of love that is so good they feel it's too good to be true this is why they run okay so divine feminines tend to think that they're the problem that that they messed up that they're not good enough for the divine masculine because they randomly just decided to run away from this this intense connection that they they know they both felt but the divine masculine runs because they feel they are not worthy every single time and because they're so scared because they've never experienced a connection this good this profound this loving this high right they're on a high and they're they're thinking well i'm on a high i have to eventually come down because this isn't normal <laughs> so they run they're scared it's intense and what happens this leads the divine feminine to go a little stir crazy to go so you know this is the, the the separation phase the no contact phase you know and and this separation phase varies from person to person from some people it could be just a few weeks it could be several months it could be a year several years this really depends on you this depends on the divine feminine okay the divine feminine is the one that leads the journey the divine feminine is the one that's more spiritually tapped in so you know more spiritual um, more tapped into her gifts, you know, as more intuitive, etc. So again, it is not based on gender, but based on your energy. So what are some other ways to know this person is a twin flame? After the, the, the separation phase, what happens? You go into an ego death. The, the divine feminine goes into dark, what's called dark night of the soul. And sometimes you can feel this coming on right before you go into separation so you'll feel your divine masculine pulling away you feel like the divine masculine is slowly starting to distance themselves and you don't know why and you go crazy like i said and this triggers your dark night of the soul so what happens in dark night of the soul you start crying uncontrollably you have no idea why you're crying because in most cases you feel like you barely even know this person so it doesn't make sense to be crying over them like i barely know this person why am i crying over them this doesn't make any sense i'm not crying over them this 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 must be something else that's happening to me and then you start having anxiety and then the uncontrollable crying might feel like panic attacks because it's so uncontrollable you don't 
you don't know what's happening. So it could be a panic attack or it could just be uncontrollable crying. And then what happens because of the uncontrollable crying and you're anxious and whatnot, you then can't sleep for the life of you. You have restless nights. You can't sleep no matter how much melatonin you're taking and you can't eat. You have a lack of appetite. Now, in some cases, where some people, they stress eat, right? So they end up eating too much. They binge eat. But in most cases, people will not be able to eat. I know for me, I had no appetite whatsoever. I couldn't eat. I tried to eat, but I couldn't eat. And I ended up losing weight. And I was, I'm already skinny enough as it is. Like I'm naturally thin. And I was, I was so thin. It didn't, I didn't look sick, but it just, I wasn't used to that. Granted, I loved seeing my abs though, (laughs) but it was not, it was not natural for me. And mentally I was just not well. And, and so this triggers you, right? And, And in some cases, what's really scary, and this might be a trigger warning, but you may have suicidal thoughts. It doesn't mean you're going to act on those suicidal thoughts, but you feel like temporarily you don't want to be here. It's very, very scary. It's not, this is why when people say that they want it, oh, I want my twin flame. I want to meet my twin flame. No, you don't. (laughs) Let me tell you, you don't. I mean, it's a beautiful journey when you overcome it, when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, like where I'm at, I'm at, I'm at so much peace in my journey, right? I feel great. I feel on a high, but it can take people a very, very long time to get there. Like people who are in the second wave, they are struggling right now. They, it seems like they're not coming out of it. It's very, very difficult. And I feel sorry for them, but you know, there's just, everyone's journey is different. So I would say, do not wish to meet your twin flame. It's, it's very difficult because it's hard. Okay. The, the suicidal thoughts are really, really hard. It was, it's very, it's a very scary experience. And it, like I said, it doesn't mean you're going to act on them. Um, like for example, for me, when I have those thoughts and I even told myself, I'm like, I'm, I don't want to do this, but I just don't want to be here. I don't want, I don't like this feeling. So it's not like you want to act on it. It's just that you, you're tired of feeling like you're suffering. I mean, think about many nights of not being able to sleep and you're crying and you don't know why, of course, you're going to have these thoughts of, I don't want to be here. I'm so tired of this feeling. I'm so tired of suffering. This is a shitty feeling, right? So what happens next? Because you feel like you're going crazy and you don't know what's happening to you, then you start to get help. You want to get help. And so you might start to go to a a psychiatrist, a therapist, a counselor, somebody for help. You go to self-help books. You go to, you name it. I, you know, You go to a healer. Many people on this journey tend to go to a therapist and then they go to a psychic because they're like, okay, there's something deeper than than what my psychologist is saying or my therapist or psychiatrist. I think I need to go see a healer or a psychic to figure out what's going on because you have obsessive thoughts over this person that you don't want to think about. So you feel like you're going crazy because you're like, this doesn't make sense. Why am I even thinking about this person? I need to go see somebody for answers about this person. Why? Right. So you might go see a psychic. They might give you answers. And I don't recommend you depending on this because not all psychics have the ability or have or their guides or your guides might not want you to know what's going on because you have to figure it out on your own. So I went to a healer. My healer did not want to tell me that this was a twin flame journey, but they guided me in certain directions that Eventually, I understood weeks later that this was the twin flame journey. After this happens, this leads you to your spiritual awakening. It leads you to your ego death, which basically kills off everything that no longer serves you. So that could be like social media, drinking, partying, so many different things um, that's ego-based, um, materialistic things, modeling. I mean, and I'm not trying to put anyone down that models, but... Things that might not bring you real genuine value to your life, to your soul. Basically, what your soul thinks that you should remove from your life, it's going to remove it from your life. This is why many marriages will end up failing when you are on this journey because you are not meant to be with your spouse. And I will get into this on a separate episode about being married and on the twin flame journey. Basically, your soul 
goes through your your ego goes through death right they call it dark night of the soul but it should really be dark night of the ego because it is your ego that is dying okay it's killing off what no longer serves you this then makes you wake up to what serves you what should i be doing in my life what should i be what should I be attaining? What should I be learning? Which what feeds my soul, right? So what happens after is you go into isolation, you start going crazy, and you're like, I need help. So you start picking up self help books, you start speaking to people in the spiritual community, you start meditating, start doing Reiki, you start doing all kinds of different things that are going to be helping you. This is how you know you've met a twin flame. If your twin flame does not make you want to be the best version of yourself, does not make you spiritually wake up, does not make you go through this ego death, this dark night of the soul, then I'm going to tell you this person is not your twin flame. If you think you're on a twin flame journey, if your twin flame did not make you experience these things, this person is not your twin flame. Your twin flame makes you want to be the best version of yourself. So certain triggers and traumas will randomly come to surface, not because they pointed it at you. Okay. Karmics will do that. Soulmate might even do that. Okay. You know, they, they, they trigger each other and say, you did this and you did that. And you need to change that. Why aren't you fixing that? No, a twin flame will not point that out for you unless they're doing it in a very like kind manner to help you. But uh, a twin flame, especially in the very beginning where you barely even know anything about this person, your insecurities will come to surface out of nowhere. This person could be the nicest person to you and suddenly you feel insecure, you feel jealous or you feel like you don't love yourself. Old insecurities that you had about yourself that you thought you've overcome suddenly come back and you have no idea why. You're like, I thought I loved myself though. I I thought I was good. No. And then all of a sudden traumas and triggers, you know, once you start you meditating and whatnot, all of your traumas will come to surface. Or even before you start meditating, traumas will come to surface, old memories, flashbacks, and you have no idea why. Because your twin flame's higher self is triggering you to become the best version. It is to become the best version of yourself. It is to get you in alignment with your soul, with your higher self. Because we all should be in alignment with our soul. This is why when you do start to wake up and you're on this journey and suddenly, you know, you start to feel in, in your bones, in your soul, like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't work at this company anymore. I shouldn't be friends with this person anymore. I shouldn't be drinking. I shouldn't be eating these foods. I don't think this person that I'm with, who's not my twin flame, but I don't think this person, whether it's my spouse or my girlfriend or boyfriend, is the person I'm meant to be with. You feel it in your soul. Your soul will definitely start telling you this is not right for you. And when you start meditating and doing the work and you start grounding yourself and you start tapping into your spiritual gifts, you're going to basically be like, that's out. That's done. I'm done with that. I'm like, obviously not like that. Not so quickly, but you start feeling what no longer serves you and you want it out of your life completely. Everything toxic or everything that's just not meant to be in your life anymore, okay? This, like I said, this is why so many marriages fall apart and so many relationships fall apart and people lose their jobs. People go through hell during dark night of the soul because they are literally getting rid of what no longer serves them. And so they think that it's something scary because they're having so many losses, but what happens after you have those losses? Many, many gains. You start to gain so many new good things into your life. You start to replenish. You get rid of the bad and you bring in the good. This is why when I do Reiki, I always end my my energy clearing and I say, fill me with good energy, get rid of the negative. Fill me with positive energy, get rid of the negative. And I just kind of do like a little wash over my my entire body from head to toe because I'm cleansing my energies. So what are some other ways that you know that this person is your twin flame? So the main, main concept is after meeting them, you get triggered, you get, you get activated. And what I mean by that is like, wow, it's like fireworks. It's so magnetic. It's fiery, right? That is the first clue. And then the second sign is you, when you go basically no contact, right? That person ghosts you, the divine masculine ghosts, runs, avoids, out of nowhere, 
And then that triggers the divine feminine to go into the ego death, the dark night of the soul, which I explained earlier. And then that dark night of the soul triggers the spiritual awakening. You have to go through all of these concepts. If you're not aligned and you're not balanced, your energies are not balanced within, these are usually the things that happen, okay? Now, let's say you are in a high vibration. You might not experience that dark night of the soul. I had a client of mine who was already meditating twice a day prior, twice a day. And she is a divine feminine, but she barely experienced a dark night of the soul because she was already in high alignment and in high vibration, whereas her divine masculine was not. So he went through dark night of the soul. She felt it a little bit, but not much. So this can happen if you are not in a very high vibration and you don't meditate, you're not, you know, tapped in, you're going to experience these things. I, even though I was spiritual, I was not practicing meditation. I was not in a high vibration. Yes, I was embodying my feminine energy, but I was not balanced. My energies were not balanced and I was not practicing meditation and prayer and on all that stuff. So these are the things that happen when you encounter your twin flame, you get activated. Okay. And then this leads you to your awakening. This leads you to, to do healing. And what are some of the things that we experience in on this twin flame journey? You know, what happens is a lot of people have doubts. And shortly after meeting your twin um, and you're going through dark night of the soul, most people tend to hear about twin flames after that. And then that's when it clicks for them. Oh my God, I'm going through a twin flame journey. I'm on a twin flame journey. What is this? What do I do? Right? And so they start going down this rabbit hole of, how do I overcome this twin flame journey? How do I get back into contact? How do I get my divine masculine back? It is a lot. It is a lot because you become you become extremely anxious. You become you have the obsessive thoughts that you can't overcome. And then you're asking your you're asking God and your spirit guides to cut the energetic cord between you and your twin flame because it doesn't make sense to be thinking about this person. You barely know them or you don't want to think about them, especially people who are married. They're like I need to get over this person. This is doing harm to my relationship. This needs to stop. And then the more you try to stop, the harder it gets. The more signs you get about them, you get start seeing you start having synchronicities. You start seeing number patterns all the time. I remember right before my I hit my dark night of the soul, I had just flown to Tennessee. And like literally that day, I was seeing so many number patterns. 1221, 2121, 2112. Like 1441, 1444. And I'm like, what is this? Right. And I had ner- I had heard about number patterns before and I knew that they were angel numbers, but I'm like, but why am I seeing them now? This makes no sense. I didn't know about the twin flame journey at the time. And I was so confused, so confused. They're, the answers were right in front of me, but so confused. And so you'll start to see so many number patterns like 11, 11, 10, 10, 12, 12, 22, 22, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, et cetera. Okay. It goes on and on. And then big numbers that you see, especially when you start to get in alignment and you're meditating and whatnot, you'll start to see 88 and 69. I was always seeing 88 and 69, and I had no idea that they were twin flame numbers. 88 is a huge twin flame number, and just about everyone will see that. 69, if you think about it, it's yin and yang, right? And 88 is infinity, and it's just, it's being one, right? These are things that you will experience, and then you start to see their name, or their, or you'll hear their name, or you'll see their initials, or their birth date, or birth year on license plates. It's, it gets crazy, and you start to feel like you're going nuts. You really start to feel like you're going crazy, and I promise you you're not, but this happens because you're doubting the journey, and the more you doubt the journey... And the more you try to ask your guides and God to get over this person, the more the universe is going to keep showing you signs. You cannot get over this person. You have to stay on track. There is a purpose for this journey. There is a purpose for this person to be in your life. They activated you to awaken. Now, I know many people and, you know, there's people out there that give misinformation and say, well, a twin flame is just a catalyst to your awakening. No, that is not true. Yes, they are there to wake you up spiritually. They are there to bring you in your highest self, to bring you closer to God, to bring you, uh, to make you have a connection with your higher self and be in alignment with your truth, with your purpose. 
but that is not all they're there for. Many twin flames are coming into union now as we speak. Why? Why is this happening? Because we have a shift in the world because it is a, there is a huge awakening. So this is what's happening. You know, like a twin flames are not meant to just wake you up spiritually. They're they're there. They're, they are your divine counterpart. This is why in the spiritual world, you guys are already in union. You are your soul. You're half of the soul and they're half of the soul. You're yin and yang. You're already in union, which is why you've had many past lives together, which is why you cannot break the cord no matter how hard you try. That energetic cord that you have between your heart chakra and their heart chakra, it is unbreakable unbreakable so the more you try to break it the harder it gets for you the more signs you get about that person the more god is trying to put them in front of your face saying stop trying to remove me i am a part of you i am you you are me just stay focused stay on track be present you have to surrender okay so this is what happens on a twin flame journey and obviously i will be uncovering so many different concepts about how to surrender, giving more details about the feminine and masculine energy and how to balance your energies and how to embrace your feminine energy if you are a divine feminine. I'm going to be going into telepathic communication. That's another thing. That's another big thing that you know you're on this journey is feeling them telepathically. Although we can feel other people telepathically. We can feel soulmates. I feel my daughter sometimes. I feel other soul soulmate friends that I have, but not as intensely as the twin flame. You will feel your your twin flame telepathically a lot. You can, you might hear them. You might get visions of them randomly, and I will go into this. And you have very 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 strong dreams about them. The dreams that you have about your twin flame are more vivid and cosmic than any dream you will have about other people. I'm a big dreamer. I dream about so many different people randomly. Some of my dreams are so random, but there's always like some kind of funny subconscious message about it. But I will have dreams about my friends. I've even dreamt about people I've never met before. And I know some people even meet will dream about their twin flame before ever meeting them. And I think that is phenomenal. I think that's, that's mind blowing to me. Um, that did not happen to me, but I'm a big dreamer. And the dreams that I have about my twin flame are way more vivid and so, so real and cosmic. It's, they're out of this world. They're so beautiful and profound. And I don't have that with anyone else where I feel like I'm literally touching him in my dream and I can feel his warm energy. That kind of stuff does not happen with regular people in your dream. So these are some of the ways that you know you're on a twin flame journey, but you have to remember if you're not if you're not feeling like you need to be your best self, if you don't have that urge to become the best version of yourself and not wanting to connect with God, it's probably not your twin flame. If you feel so much resentment towards your twin flame, you either have a lot of healing to do or that person is not your twin flame. I don't have a single ounce of resentment for my twin. I don't. I felt nothing but unconditional love. I was a little upset in the beginning when I got ghosted, but I knew that there was a reason for it. I was, I'm grateful for that because that separation taught me to love myself. That separation was healing for me. That separation taught me to not be dependent on my twin flame for love, to not seek attention and validation for my twin flame or other people. I learned to set boundaries. I learned to love myself. I learned everything. I learned to be in touch with my higher self. I became literally, I became the best version of myself. And I'm so proud of that. I'm so freaking proud of that, of who I am today. And I'm grateful for that. I just love who I am today. And I want that for every single twin flame. I want every single twin flame to experience that, which is why I'm here today. I'm here to help you get to a place of divine inner union, a place of inner peace, a place of joy, a place of 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 gratitude and place of, of just bliss, of high vibration. This is where you need to be in order. First, you have to have divine inner union, and then you can have union with your twin. 
But until you have divine inner union, you won't get there. And if you do reunite with your twin and you still don't have divine inner union, guess what? You're going to get faced with more obstacles and more separation phases. You don't want that. Heal yourself first. So that is it for today's podcast. I know it's a little long. Um, most likely most of my um, other episodes will probably be a little bit shorter, but I really wanted to go into depth in this one. Um, because the twin flame connection can be confusing. And I will go into what soulmates and karmics are in other episodes. I'm going to go in, I'm going to go deep into so many other episodes. And I am working on a workshop as well that will help you basically teach you how to navigate the twin flame journey. I'm going to be uncovering the top six things that I recommend you do on the journey, as well as telepathic communication, healing traumas, connecting with your inner child, how to meditate. Um, Because I know a lot of my clients, they come to me and they're like, I know you say to meditate, but I don't know how to meditate. So I'm going to go into that. I'm going to talk about karmic clearing and third party connections, um, as well as balancing your energies, getting out of victim mentality, embracing your feminine side, having divine. I mean, there's just so much that I'm going to be unpacking on the workshop. And so that is why the month of August, I'm not doing calls. I'm not doing coaching sessions because I'm focusing on that, on the workshop, as well as this podcast, and also just having some, some me time. But I really hope that you enjoyed this episode and I hope you stay tuned for more. I'm going to be unpacking a lot of stuff here. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for being here. And I wish you such a beautiful day, a blessed day, and may God bless you and may your angels always be with you. Thank you. Take care.